I want to show you how to get Netbox up and running in 10 minutes or less. So before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, Network to Code, who literally takes what you can do with Netbox to a whole nother level. The focus of Network to Code is network automation. So you use Netbox as that source of truth, that central database, you add your devices. Network to Code allows it to then say, okay, let's add that to the monitoring system, add the sensors, throw it in the inventory management. Let's make sure we track what warranty that device has. Let's go ahead and add it to an, a customer asset in our customer database system. I mean, essentially, if you can dream it, that's the idea of automation. With code, network automation can accomplish virtually anything. So. Thanks, Network to Code. Now, let's jump into Netbox. Let's get the clock up here in the corner. Ready? Go, okay? Now we're gonna uh, go into the world of Proxmox. What's that? It's a hypervisor solution. Uh, I have a whole training series on it. It's phenomenal, it's free, and it could be anything. It could be VMware, it could be Hyper-V that you use. You could install on bare metal. Essentially, we need to get going in a Linux environment. And the fastest way to do that in today's world is through this thing called containers, or some people use straight up Docker on top of an, like an Ubuntu or Linux instance. An LXC container is essentially Linux in a shared kernel environment. So it's really efficient on your resources. So I'm just gonna create a new LXC container called uh, Netbox, and all, all, th by the way, this is there's nothing special here that that uh, isn't uh, you know that you have to do for Netbox. You can install it on Ubuntu. This just gets Linux up and running really fast for us. So I'm going to click on next. The template I'm going to use is Ubuntu 18.04, which again just prepares the environment. Might as well give it 20 gigs of storage, right, in case I upload a bunch of stuff. Uh, processor again with with uh, with the, uh, an LXC container, you don't need much. Let's give it a, you know a, a, a gig of memory, right? Should be more than enough. Uh, network environment, I'll make this uh, 172.20. Let's go 0 0.80 slash 24. Gateway 172.20.0.1. That'll be the IP address we use to, use, uh, to connect with it. And again, everything I'm showing you right now uh, is just setting up the base uh, Linux foundation, right? I'll click on next and finish. And that's that's going to start running right now, and it's it, you know it, do, it doesn't take long. It's extracting a little uh, Ubuntu archive, right? Spinning it up in the background, and we're done. You click on status. We now have uh, this this uh, okay. The job is running now. It stopped. Okay, we're ready to go. Click X on that. <laughs> Looking at my time. Uh, we're going to uh, to Netbox, and we will. Oh, one quick uh, tweak to make in this one. I'm going to go to features. I'm going to turn on nesting. Uh, what nesting is, is uh, the ability to run containers inside of a containerized environment, right? We're actually going to install a, uh, a Netbox using Docker, right? And we're, we're using that inside of a Docker-like environment, which is an LXC container, which again is just Linux. So if you're using Proxmox, then you need to have this nesting turned on, otherwise you'll run into problems. So click on start uh, and get that guy up and running. Open the console and boom. Don't you? So, so guys, <laughs> like like hours of install. Well, maybe not hours, but a lot of time was just saved by using. Uh, hang on, my clock is ticking. Right. Okay. So I'm I'm, I'm here at the login. I'm going to log in as root. Uh, get in my super secret password that I typed in there and realize that I typed it wrong. So I'm going to try it again. Root. Type it in and boom, there we are in the environment. So first thing I'm going to do apt update. Uh, anytime you get a new Linux version out there, you want to get, you know, get it updated. And this is just going out and saying, do, are there updates available? Yes, there are. Okay. So now that you fetch them, I'm going to do an upgrade. If you don't do this, a lot of times you'll be missing kind of the foundation components in, in that, by the way, that's just running in the background. So let's do and I talk while it's, while it's doing that. Um, well, I've got some time. Uh, so it's just updating all the foundation components because otherwise you just run into weird stuff, stuff that doesn't work and you're like, ah, troubleshoot, troubleshoot. And it's like, oh, you just had to install an update, right? So so this guy is running right now, getting, we'll say the the containerized environment that, uh, that Netbox will run in up to speed. I don't know what else to say during this time. So I, you know, and I, I mean, I clock is running. I can't, I can't cut off the time. I've got, I've got 10 minutes. So Okay, we're back here. So I'm, I'm coming back here, 78% done with the, the update process. And by the way, it says, hey, do you wanna restart your, your services uh, without asking? Yes, I'm, don't worry, this isn't production environment. Do that. And, and one of the things I always do anytime I'm updating Linux 
is I uh, always reboot it. Now, the beauty of rebooting a containerized Linux, and again, if you want to know more about Proxmox, you want to know more about LXC containers, things like that, go check out the Proxmox series. But the beauty of, of this is it's so fast to reboot. So watch this. I'm going to do a shutdown dash R now, right? Boom. It's, it's just like, okay, we just logged out. It's disconnecting. Your virtual machine is down and boom. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> I, I love it so much, I, I'm just gonna rot instead of root. Come on, come on. Clock sticking. I, I, I don't know why I said to me, it just, it, it was one of those catchy kind of markety thing. Okay, so I'm gonna do a apt install uh, net tools. Uh, things like IF config, ping, yeah, you want those, uh, especially if you're a network person. I'm gonna do an apt install uh, Docker because that's how we're gonna run uh, uh, netbox is inside of that and as, and by the way docker if you don't know little explanation it's it's kind of like a, a virtual application environment and netbox uses multiple containers of dockers if you're if you're gonna use that so the way it assembles it is through something called docker dash compose what docker compose is and we'll let that download it's about a half a gig of, of uh, download that's gonna do so let me let me describe that while we're going here um, what Docker Compose is, is a, think of it like a recipe book where Netbox is like, okay, I need a database, I need a web server, I need a, you know, I need, I need, I need, a, right? And so it's going to run those in multiple integrated Docker containers that all fit together. So the way it assembles that for you is through this Docker Compose. It pretty much says, okay, here's the recipe, go assemble all these Docker containers for them so you don't have to do it manually. Again, you can do, you can install Netbox manually. You can go line by line. There's a bajillion instructions online on how to do that. Oh man, I'm wasting time. Um, but but why? I mean, why spend hours getting it up and running and go through that pain? Uh, last thing I'm gonna do is apt install git. Um, if you don't know about the, oh, it's already installed. Uh, so git is the way that you download from a repository online to where you know the latest version of Netbox can be found. Okay, so so I, this this is not necessary for Netbox, but I, I need it just because I, I want to do it. I'm going to do a pico, etc. ssh, ssh, uh, d underscore config, right? Um, what this is, is the configuration for the ssh process. And by default, thanks uh, Ubuntu, it is very secure and they do not let you log in using the root, root account. So I'm going to go permit root login is going to be yes, right? Control S, Control X, get out of there. So, so now it's there. I'm gonna do a service SSH restart uh, so that those new permissions can be applied. And now I can connect using something like PuTTY. All right, we'll bring PuTTY into the picture just, just because uh, you, working over SSH is just a lot easier for me. I need to remember the IP address. There it is, 172.20.080. Let's do a copy and paste, open says, yes, I do want to use that security key, and yes, right there is my, my putty instance, right? So I'm going to do a login as root, type in my credentials, and <laughs> it's, the pressure's killing me. I, I'm, I'm trying to go too fast. There we go. Now I'm in over SSH rather than using the console right here. It makes just copy and paste and things like that a lot easier. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to copy and paste this line. Uh, because it's the download path. So we're going to use git to download from a repository this netbox docker git file, right? So now if I do an ls, which does a directory list, I see there's a new folder there called netbox docker. And I can do a change directory into that, do an ls, and there's all the files that I downloaded from the git repository, right? Um, now I'm going to go and create a file. This is again, I'm going to use my copy and paste right here. And, and, and just so you know, let me, let me, um, open uh, notepad so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, I'm gonna paste in, oh man, look at look at all my, my tabs are just messed up here. I'm gonna paste this in. What this does is create a file called docker compose uh, .override.yaml, right? It's a, it's a YAML configuration file. And it says, hey, you know what? You're done creating this file when you see the, the, the characters EOF, end of file type, which I have at the end here, right? So if I go here, control C to my clipboard and paste that in, what I did is I just created that file. If I do an ls docker uh, compose override, I'll see it right there. And if I do a, you know, control A, I'll do a uh, more to see what's in there. It's just this. Essentially, this configures Netbox to run on port 8000. If you want to run it on a different port, that's where you change it. Edit that file and change it to, you know, 8500, 8, 8, 8, you know, 9000. You got up to 65,536 ports. Pick one, right? Um, and, and just make sure it doesn't overlap with something else. Okay. 
So we've got that there. Now we can do the Docker Compose. I'm gonna do a Docker dash Compose. Now, by the way, the way this works, if you, if you wanna, I don't get this. How, do, how does Docker Compose know what to do? Uh, that's what this file is right here. See this? I'm gonna do a more uh, right-click Docker file. This is the recipe that, that, it, that essentially Docker Compose follows. It's like, okay, I'm gonna do all of this. I'm gonna go find, you know, find these different packages that are needed to run it, et cetera, et cetera. You can see 21%, you know, just, you can space that. That's the script that it follows. It's just called Docker file. So I'm gonna do a Docker dash compose and I'll do pull, which looks for that file. Oh, hang on, hang on. It says uh, in file Docker compose service must be a mapping, not a none. Oh man, I totally messed something up here. And hey, let me look. Uh, let's do a uh, Pico. Docker Compose. What did, I, what did I miss? What did I miss? Version 3.4. Good. Okay. Services colon. Uh, maybe the spacing is off. NGX. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, we'll do the ports. And then we'll do a 8088. Okay. That looks good. It looks good. I, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on here. So Docker Compose pull. That was it. Spacing. So in removing all those tabs, I just messed up my spacing and it needed to be a little more accurate to uh, to have Docker Compose run. So there we go, we've got Docker Compose going. And by the way, I'm going to put all of the commands like this with the right spaces in the in the text underneath this uh, uh, video. So if, you, and, and by the way, the reason I'm doing this is I love talking you through it. Ah, somebody's calling me, hang on. Don't call me right now. Um, I, I love talking you through it so you know what you're doing. There's so many things where you can just copy and paste it online and it's up and running, but you're like, I don't know how that all happened. I want to add a little color commentary for that. If you just want to copy and paste, I mean, go for it. Pause me. I'm done. And, and just copy and paste all the commands and you should have a netbox uh, up and running in, in 10 minutes or less, right? So right now it's still going through following the script from Docker Compose, uh, downloading and extracting each one of those things. Now, I, I have to admit, this is probably here. Let's just look probably where we could have done a little better. I mean, but this is this is a great test. Let's take a look. So so if you want to see how much resources is Netbox consuming right now as it's building, I mean you can see memory. <laughs> this is the beauty of the kernel world. Look at that, a hundred megabytes of memory, megabytes. I haven't used those terms to describe how much memory you need since like my Commodore Amiga days, right? It, like megabytes, not gigabytes, megabytes. Um, so that's, that's where we're at. It, it's saying, hey, we've got one gig assigned, but I'm only using this much, right? Oh, oh, look at that. We, oh man, we just went up 300 megabytes. Uh, processor wise, we're still about 40% utilization. So again, we're not tapping out on this thing at all. Okay, there we go. We've got, we've got uh, Docker Compose up and running. Now, now I can't see the timer. I added the timer later. So I'm sorry if I'm not gonna make it. I just can't stop talking about this stuff. It's so cool. Okay, so uh, back over here. So we've got uh, all the, the data posts. Now we just do Docker Compose up. And what that will do is take all of the puzzle pieces that you've downloaded, all the Docker images. It'll look at the formula that, that you chose to, you know, th that actually you chose. It's, it's the, from the Git repository and it will start bringing all those up. What it's doing right now is bringing up the Postgres database, right? That's gonna be where it stores all of those data. So right now, Behind the scenes, it's running. It's actually building the net, the net box Docker image. Now, this uh, this sometimes just takes a while because it's literally building the whole environment for us right right before our eyes. So I'm out of I'm out of color commentary for right now. So let's just go back. I'm going to put on some music. Put it on hyperspeed. Oh man, there it goes. I, I, that, by the way, that was not hyperspeed. Uh, that was just uh, it going through the process. So I'll put on some music. By time it's, uh, matter of fact, I'll show you what it should say. All right, there we go. When you see this listening at right here, now, now by the way, this is this is the internal port number. The, we, we assigned the port number 8,000. You remember that in the uh, file that we created? This is just internal behind the scenes what what is uh, used as it's it, it doing its magic, right? So let's come back here. I'll go to the uh, URL bar and I'll do 172.20.0. Uh, what was that? 80 colon 8,000 and Boom, right there. We've got Netbox up and running, answering the phone call. I'm gonna hit login, admin, admin is the default username and password on there. And now we can go in and start creating our sites, uh, going through and setting up our IP addresses, our prefixes, VLANs, everything like that. This is our documentation dream come true. And we did it in 
10 minutes or less. Now I'm, I'm looking at the little timer on, on the screen in front of me. It says 15 minutes, but, but think about it. If you cut out all of the, the Jeremy color commentary and distractions, you totally can do it and, and, and maybe even add a few more resources. So it goes through that, uh, that install lickety split that said netbox up and running. It's that simple.